Please stand for the reading of the word. We're reading from James 1, 22 to, through 25. The Bible says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. Verse 25, but the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. If you can, I want you to look at your neighbor and help me preach just a little bit and tell your neighbor, don't miss your blessing. Well, then look at two more folks and tell them also, don't miss your blessing. Don't miss your blessing. Don't miss your blessing. And if you can tell them one more thing for me, just, if you can tell them just one more thing for them, tell them it's yours. Oh, hallelujah. Come on now. Tell them, hallelujah, it's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Amen. Amen. I heard somebody shout, it's mine. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. It's mine, all mine. <laughs> Amen. We're in a series called Living by God's Word. Living by God's Word. And we're hoping that uh, this series has been a much of a blessing to you as it has been to me. Uh, we're in the book of James, and we have been trying to help people to learn how to study the Bible, learn the necessity of Bible, of studying the Bible. But the first thing you need to understand in studying the Bible is that listening is really important. <laughs> Y'all missed that. Because something can be said the same way with the same words and mean something completely different simply because you've missed the interpretation thereof because you didn't listen. I have a sentence on the board. I, it says, there's a difference between I got a boo-boo and I got a boo-boo and I got a boo. Boo. I uh, see y'all missed it. Okay. All right. All right. See, see there's a difference between I, I got a boo-boo and I got a boo-boo, and I got a boo, boo. <laughs> See, it's important to listen to, to understand because they, they, uh, y'all don't understand. Uh, uh, the, first, the first one is, is, is I got a boo-boo. You know, oh, I got a boo-boo. I hurt myself. And the second one is I got a boo-boo. I got a fecal emergency. <laughs> <laughs> and the third, the, third, the third one is I got a boo boo. You know, I, I, I have a significant other that I'm involved with. And, and the interpretation thereof will determine the action uh, which follows the application of that. Are y'all following this yet? Because you don't want to treat your boo like you got a fecal emergency. Say amen if you can. Amen. And, and, and if you got a boo-boo, all you really need is a little Band-Aid. Amen. You don't need to take it to, di to dinner. Are y'all following yet? See, because the interpretation thereof determines the application. And you got to listen to understand to know. And that's the reason we look at observation so importantly. Uh, and, and I will say this, uh, if I can, uh, that, that the study of God's Word is necessary. But the study of God's Word isn't just about being deep. 
The study of God, God's word is about reading the Bible over and over again. And that's until you understand what was being said. Because you could glance at this and then go your way and forget what manner of person you were. You could look at this and, and, and you, you can be walking by, which folks do all the time, and hear somebody say, I got a boo-boo. Right? And then you go back and you tell somebody else, you know, so-and-so got a new woman. But what they really meant was, I got a fecal emergency. Are y'all following this? Are y'all following this? It's, it's, it's two different things. It's, it's two different things. And it's the same way in Scripture. If, if you just run over Scripture, you're glancing at it, and then you go away, and you start applying it, and you, you start claiming promises that ain't even yours. Are y'all following this? You know, you, you start claiming the fact that, that no weapon's going to be formed against you, and, and no weapon shall prosper. You just claim it. You don't even know what he's talking about. Or is that one of y'all, one of y'all claim that y'all had never read? <laughs> yeah, go back and read that sometime. See, you, you may, you may want to not claim that one. Because, see, see that, that particular claim is connected to obedience. Because there's an antithesis in that same passage about disobedience. That if you disobey, every, <laughs> every weapon will prosper. You're going to lose I'm preaching this morning. I even started yet. Amen. Amen. So we talked about studying God's word. Are y'all staying with me? Are y'all praying? This morning they didn't pray enough and made me preach too long. So I can always see, see if y'all pray right, then I can preach fast. Amen. Because, you know, I get finished because the effectual fervent prayer <laughs> of, a, of a righteous. <laughs> so, uh, you disagree with me? Maybe you need to go study it. <laughs> Nehemiah 8 So they read in the book in the law of God how? Distinctly. And they gave the sense. Caused the people to understand the reading. So first of all, we, we understand when we read the word of God, we need to get an understanding of what we read and apply it. And apply it enough so that we can make sense of it to do it. Amen? But then the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto who? Somebody shout God. See, we, we study to show ourselves approved unto God. Uh, matter of fact, you can. You can shout, I, 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 don't, I don't need to impress you. See, I don't need to impress you. I, I, don't, I don't study to show myself approved to you. Uh-huh. I said to show myself approved unto God. But also, I don't study to show myself approved unto myself. I study to show myself approved unto God. Because the study of God's word is not about your happiness. But now, also, by antithesis, it's not, it's not to make you sad either. The study of God's word is to elevate you to holiness so that when God looks at you, he can be approved. Say amen when you can. I was thinking the other day, I, and I told my wife, my wife is such a, an amazing woman. Uh, um, but I was, I, was, I was telling my wife, you know, I'm a horrible person. And y'all say, you were just playing. No, really, I am for real, for real. Because I have certain non-negotiables in my life. I don't, have, I don't have many of them. But my non-negotiables are like super non-negotiable. I mean, like, anally non-negotiable, like, no. And I've been walking, watching stuff, and, and folks be having marital problems on TV. <laughs> on TV. And I'd be like, yo, that would have been the end of the marriage. And my wife like, yo. Because those are non-negotiables for me. If I'm not good enough, what you doing here? Now, you, see, you see, now y'all looking at that like that's a good thing. That's a horrible thing. You say, why are you saying that here? Because here, right here, see, if a person will study the word, the word of God, see, then your non-negotiables mean nothing. Okay, I'm going to go on. Y'all just ain't ready to hear this. Okay, whatever. I'm just letting y'all know. See, 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 then your non-negotiables mean nothing. Because God said, are y'all following this? Because I'm not studying to show myself approved to myself. It's about God. If not, I can't cut the word straight, and then my life will be whopped. You know what I mean? We talked about that. All of a sudden, my life is like this. And we wonder why our life is like this. It's because we don't cut the word straight. We don't study show ourselves approved 
a workman, a person that gains the skill. You see that word workman? A person that gains the skill to cut straight. That lets me know that if I'm going to be a, a student of the Word of God, i got to be a student. Oh, God, I'm trying to get off of this, Lord. You just don't want me to leave here. I'm just, I'm just if, if I'm going to be a student of the Word of God, i got to be a student. God, please help me right here. Because I can't, I can't be a disciple of Christ and not be a student of the Word. Which means I must have more than just a peripheral kind of a relationship with the Word. The Word can't just be about when I need it. Because I need it all the time. The word can't be just when I get in trouble. You know, when I get in trouble, now go get me a word. It, it can't be, I got to be a student of the word of God. I got to be a person who stays in the word, saturates myself. I got to study. Now, now, the problem is, see, this word study here, the, the original word, it doesn't mean study like we mean study. This word means diligence. It means sweat. It means give sweat. Be diligent. Be diligent. Work until it's done. Study. Be diligent. A workman, a person who has the skill to cut straight. Because then I need to go someplace where I can get the skill. Say amen when you can. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. So, so that's the reason we're going through this, this kind of a message. To try to give folk the skill to cut straight. You, listen, you may never have the skills to be a chef. But praise God, at least you know how to flip burgers. Amen, somebody. You may never be Wolfgang Puck. Amen. Amen. But at least you can work glory to God at Jack in the Box. Are y'all following? So, anyway. So, that's the reason why we gave you these applications, these, these correlation scriptures. So then faith cometh by what? And hearing by what? Oh, God. Oh, God. I want you to notice the, the, the progression here. Faith comes by hearing. And I want you to notice the implication is that I can't have faith unless I've heard. Are y'all following this? But, but not just hearing anything. He, uh, the apostle here speaks with much specificity. He says, hearing by the word of God. So if I'm going to have faith, i got to hear the word of God. And my faith starts with my hearing. It lets me know that in order for me to be faithful, i got to be full of the word. Word which comes by hearing. And I will let you know, uh, I'm trying to my best, but I, I, I will let you know this, is that the hearing of the word of God, the reason he says hearing as opposed to reading, because the hearing of the word of God is vitally important to faith development, uh, as much as reading. Uh, uh, you remember during this time, uh, we are blessed today, most, I, mean, I think so, everybody in this room, except for maybe Carter, can read. Excuse me. Everybody <laughs> can read. We're blessed. We live in a society where we learn to read, which is a huge blessing. In this society, most folk couldn't read. And so the idea of hearing the word was vitally important. And so they would just listen to the word. Whenever the word was spoken, they would hear. That's the reason when a teacher came through, volumes of people would gather around him. Because the, the development of faith was necessary not only through my eyes, but through my ears. Faith come by hear. But I noticed uh, that participial phrase, hearing. Hearing. I, I got to keep on hearing. All right? Not just by what I've heard. And so every time the word is spoken, when you come here, when, you, when you're here uh, 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 and listening to me preach, or, or when you're there and listening to Matt or Sam or, or, or Brother Mike or Sister Myra, whoever's doing, when, you, when you're listening, to, you need to be there and listen to what's being ta taught. And yes, when you're in the class, you get to engage. And engage too, absolutely. But you need to listen. Because that's what develops your faith. FYI. That's also the reason the enemy always got other folk in your ear. That's the reason the enemy always has other folk telling you the wrong stuff. Because if he can affect what you hear, he can affect your faith. And if he can affect your faith, he can affect your destiny. And if he can affect your destiny, he can, uh, he can rob you of your blessings. Well, faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You say, why is blessings connected? You should have been in class this morning. You would, you would have known why blessings are connected to your faith. Because without faith, it is, come on now. Because they that come to God must believe that he, but not only that he is, but that he is a, you see how faith is connected to your blessings? So that's the reason the enemy always got other folk in your ear telling you sideways stuff. 
That's right. They always want to tell you some sideways stuff, stuff different than the Word of God. Because faith come by hearing the Word of God. And they want to tell you stuff different than the Word of God. Anything that will tickle your ear. That's the reason it's bad to have a preacher. All he'll do is tickle folk ears. Hallelujah. Last week, we just celebrated the whole message. You know, we just talked about Jesus, and we were high, and, and praise the Lord, just celebrating Jesus. But I can't preach like that every week, because I can't just be about tickling folk ears, making you happy every week. I got to teach you, amen, I got to teach you the word of God. Because God's word is not just about your inspiration, it's about your transformation. And so amen, say amen when you can, amen. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart, I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up my word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I'm just going to deal with a little bit verse 10. We've been dealing with this every week. I'm just trying to, FYI, all of this is me modeling for you. I'm modeling for you how to study scripture. That's reason every week we keep going over the same scripture. Because I'm modeling for you that if you want to learn the word, you got to be in the word and you got to be in the same. You can't just, just jump and willy-nilly on everything all the time, looking for something that's going to tickle your fancy. you got you got to stay in it. Just let it churn up. It's called meditation. That's what we were in Psalm 1. Meditation is an agricultural word. It talks about how cows chew the cud. Ch cows have two bellies. And what happens is a, a cow would chew the cud. The cud is the, the pre-digested grass or grain that the cow has eaten. And he will store the cud in one of his extra stomachs. And later on, he will regurgitate, I know it's nasty, but he'll regurgitate the cud and chew it some more. And then he'll, then once he it, he'll put it back in, then he'll chew it again. You say, how long is he? He chews it until it has no more nutritional value. Jesus, y'all are missing this. See, 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 you, see and that's how long you say, well, how long do I need to stay in the world? So you just keep on chewing it until it ain't got nothing left in you. You just chew, 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 until, because that, that's meditation. Meditation is not uh, uh, the, the, the Eastern version, even though this is the Eastern idea, but this, it's not the Middle Eastern version of sitting and clearing your mind. See, see, that's Hinduism. Buddhism wants you to, to clear your mind, um, get in a place of, what they, uh, of transcend, transcend, transcendental meditation where you transcend knowledge. The Bible don't want you to transcend knowledge. What the Bible wants you to do is have knowledge just running around in your head. That's the New Testament idea, meditation, having the Bible, having word running around in your head. He says, if not, what happens is when you have an empty head, somebody else is going to fill it. I don't want to say this, but I'm going to say it since I'm here. If you got a daughter, what if you got a son too, praise the Lord. Uh, but I just think because I'm just old school and a little chauvinistic. If you got a daughter, make sure your daughter got a lot in her head. Because there's some dude somewhere want to fill it up with some crazy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, I know it's the same thing for men, but I'm just an old school dude, and glory to God. One day, you know, Brother Cam and these other guys are going to be doing all the preaching, glory to God, these young cats, you know, and, and they won't be as old school as me, and they'll say, well, you know, your, your sons and your daughters, well, I'm, I'm old school. Fix your daughter, glory to God, hallelujah, because some dude is waiting on her to fill her mind up with stuff. So you need to fill her mind with other stuff. So that when he start talking that crazy stuff, there's other stuff rolling around in her head. There ain't no, ain't no room for other stuff. Glory to God. I tell my, my wife and my daughter how beautiful they are every day. Every day. I heard some knucklehead said, you just think your daughter's a princess. I don't think nothing. My daughter is a princess, you idiot. I mean, what are you talking about? Why well, I think, I think, I told you I got problems. I told you I got problems. I got problems. My, my daughter's amazing. Amen. She don't hear from me all the time. So when you come running your little line, she be like, "Fool, please. <laughs> Bring something else to the table. Say amen when you can. Because that's what meditation, you want something else rolling around in your head. I'll give you a couple of more uh, 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 illustrations. Uh, uh, my friend here, uh, 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 back in the day, uh, I don't think he does it that much anymore, but back in the day he used to listen to a whole lot of gangster rap. Uh, I don't believe it, I have no problem. I got a problem with the cussing in gangster rap, but I ain't got no problem with gangster rap. But the problem is, when you live in the lifestyle he used to live, all of a sudden, oh, praise God, that's your testimony. Glory to God. You ought to glory in that. Hallelujah. 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 All of a sudden, that old stuff starts to make you meditate on some other stuff. That's one of the purposes of music. One of the purposes of music is to have something bouncing around in your head. That's the reason we meditate on music. That's the reason we can hear, hear lyrics all the time. 
Amen. Still remember, amen. When I was younger, there was this thing called Meow Mix. See, y'all know already. It already started bouncing around in your head. You say, well, that's stupid. No, it's genius. Because suddenly, all of a sudden, they got you meditating. Meow, 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 this is 30-some years ago. Are y'all following this? That's the reason in the word. That's the reason he says here in our psalm, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Amen. I can't amen. All right. All right. We talked about eisegesis and exegesis. Observation. Come on now. Amen. Amen. Um, observation is... What does it say? That's the whole boo-boo thing that I just gave you illustration of. You need to what's being said. Say amen, amen. You said, oh, I heard what you said. No, no, what? no, no, no. You need to make sure you really hear what I'm saying before you try to tell me what I mean, which is interpretation. Then you may want to see what else is going on in my life so you can really have a full understanding of what I got a boo-boo means. Say amen when you can. I got a boo-boo depending on my life. It may be an indication that I jacked up at school and my teacher had to pop me on my hand. Or, or it could mean, you know, I ate the wrong stuff yesterday. So you need to keep an eye on me. Or it could mean I've been single like 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> now I got a boo-boo. Anyway, so then what does it mean to me? Now I know how to respond to you. Now I know how to use the information. Now I know what the Bible wants me to do. Living by God's word. Ah, the blessing of Bible living. Y'all still all right? All right. The blessing of Bible living. Ah, I can't. I'm not going to tell you all these stories. Some awesome stories, too. No, I'm hoping y'all give me about 10 more minutes, but uh, yeah. The word saves. The word saves. See, somebody was praying. See me just go right over that? I didn't even know somebody was praying. So those are some good old stories. The word saves. Salvation is in three senses and three tenses. All right. Now, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized shall be what? And whoever does not believe shall be what? They are condemned here. The old us, old school, shall be damned. Um, um, so here when we talk about salvation, the initial idea of salvation. Everybody comes into the body the same way. Everybody comes in the same way. So a person, uh, salvation is very simple. When you want to do it, you use a simple, simple formula. Simple, simple formula. He that believes, because you hear the word, because faith comes by what? So he heard the word. He said, go in there and preach the gospel. See the idea of hearing the word? Preach the gospel. He said, he that believes, right, and is baptized shall be what? See, it's pretty, pretty simple. Person believe, person baptized, they'll be saved. It's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. So if a person believes and is not baptized, they're not saved. All right? So if a person is baptized but never believe, they're not saved. See, that's, that's the reason we don't, we don't preach uh, infant baptism here. Because it's impossible for an infant to believe. And I know there's some places they go and christen the baby and then they say that they, they're transferring salvation. That's because they have a theological idea of the power of the priest. Because the power of the priest can transfer salvation. He can also transfer d damnation. He can also save you at the last moment by giving you last rites. That's a whole theological mindset. But it's not really a biblical mindset. Biblical mindset is this. In order for a person to be saved, a person must believe. That means they must have an age where they can take in information and believe what has been preached, right? So they must believe. And then when a person believes and is baptized. Now, folks say, well, does baptism save a person? Well, absolutely and absolutely not. It, it absolutely saves and it absolutely doesn't save. If you ask me, does, is there something special in a water back there, I would tell you no. That's tap. 
We didn't pray over it. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just being real with you. It's, it's just water. What saves you is the fact that faith demands work. Not work meaning uh, 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 doing something which deserves something. Work meaning faith is the applic faith is the, is is your is your body doing what your mind has believed. So so because faith therefore without actions is dead. It matter of fact some play, some verses say it's useless. It's like and I've used this several times. If if I told several of you uh, that you know I have a thousand dollars in my pocket, and the first person that gets up here, I'm gonna give it to you. See he would be. Because he believed. Right? Now, see, the rest of y'all didn't even move. Because you don't believe. Are y'all following? You see? Faith without works. It's dead. Being alone. You, you ain't believe me. So, so if God, so if God, so if God, well, you can believe if I said I was going to give you $1,000, I would have already talked to her. <laughs> believe that. <laughs> but, but, but so faith, so if, so if God says believe and be baptized, if I believe God, I'll get baptized. See, see, see it's, it's really simple. If I believe God, I'll get baptized. I don't care about how it works. I believe God, I do what he says do. And I, not only do I do what he says do, I believe in his promise. So I shall be saved. And if I don't, I'll be lost. And so that's that first level of salvation. That's the first, and that's the reason we preach that. That's the reason we don't preach, that's the reason we don't have uh, the traditional altar call. Um. Um, the reason we don't is not because I have a problem with the altar call. As a matter of fact, I think sometimes in a prayer meeting we ought to have an altar call. <laughs> Therefore, come down here and just fall out before God. Hallelujah. I ain't got no problem. See, I, see folks, I'm not set tripping. <laughs> what I'm telling you is that, but I am a doctrinal preacher. And so, so if, if, we want, if we want people to be saved, you believe right there in your seat. You hear the gospel and you believe it. You ain't got to come down and let me lay hands on you. And y'all know we believe in laying on hands. Here. I elder, I every I say make sure you keep your oil ready. If somebody wants to pray, we believe it. It's in the Bible. We believe in it. We do it. We do it. If you're sick today, you say I'm feeling sick in my body. I, I want you to pray over me. He will get his oil out and pray over you. Is it magic? No. We just believe in obedience. If God said do it, we just do it. Quit, quit questioning God. You, amen. So anyway, I don't want to get on. So 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 we don't have an altar call in that way. We say, a person, come. The reason we do that is just to give you an opportunity to come. You can sit in your seat. We'll come down there and baptize you. We, our traditions don't determine your salvation. What determines your salvation is your obedience to what God says. Are y'all following this thing yet? And so that's the first, first level when we talk about salvation. Now, most of us in here have done that. Now, I just want to tell you, I don't mean to be mean, but if you're here today, uh, uh, you've heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, and you believe it, and you were never baptized, you are outside the safety of God. Because your salvation, your salvation is what's called, uh, I don't want to get too heavy, but it, it's what's called positional. I won't give you a degree. It's what's called positional salvation. What that means is salvation means you are put in a place of salvation. Salvation is not ethical salvation. Nor is it moral salvation. It's not ethical or moral, meaning you don't get salvation because you deserved it. You don't, neither do you get salvation because you were right. Matter of fact, your salvation means God's going to declare you right. What God's going to do is going to say, you know what, Bobby Joe Ellen, you're right. Not because you're right, but you're right because I call you holy. That's the song we were singing before. I call you holy. God, 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 God calls us holy. He, he proclaims us holy, right? And so we put in a position of safety. Now, uh, over here in this position, this position it's not safe. It's called the wrath of God. So, come on, y'all stay with me. Salvation is not about um, the devil's hell. The devil don't have a hell. Hell belongs to God. Hell was made for the devil. The devil didn't create hell. The devil going to hell. Are we together? Paul said, well, ain't the devil ruling hell? He wish. I mean, I'm a comic book guy. I love, I got, I got all them comic books, and I, I love all that mythology, and I can quote it to you, and I love it, and I enjoy it, but it's just myths. The devil is in hell for punishment. 
because he is a recipient of the wrath of God. That's a position. Now, what God wants to do is to put you in this position, which is called reconciliation or friendship. God doesn't decide which position you're in. God never positions himself as your enemy. Let me say that again because y'all don't know that. God never positions himself as your enemy. God always is in a position of friendship. The problem is if you position yourself here, you've decided you're the enemy. I, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to get into any whole lot of anthropology, but you decided you're your, your, your enemy. This is, believe it or not, this is really heavy theological stuff. I'm just trying to keep it as simple as I can. You've decided I'm God's enemy. What salvation is, you deciding to go from here to there. That's all salvation is. Salvation is you deciding, you know what? I'm tired of being away from God. I want to be with God. I don't want to be God's enemy. You ain't even got to ask God because God's asking you. He is. All them songs we sing, he's calling you. All them songs, because he is. He, he wants to be friends. The entire Levitical priesthood was about God getting us back to be friends. The entire sacrificial system, the entire sending Jesus was about us being friends. The whole nine. Y'all stay with me? All right, y'all, y'all somebody stop praying because I slowed down. All right, all right. So we together? All right, so in one sense, we have been saved. When a person moves from here to here, they have been saved. That's the past tense. I have been saved. They say from the penalty of sin. What was the penalty? The penalty is called wrath of God. That was the penalty. But now I no longer have the penalty. Why? Because I'm saved. Somebody say Amen. Amen. Because here I'm safe. I'm saved. I'm safe. So I've been saved from the penalty. That's past tense. It's called justification. Why is it justification? Well, Brother Rupert this morning very eloquently gave us a, a, an analogy of what happened uh, uh, during, during the salvation process. I want to take his analogy a little further. After, after the, 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 the lawyer, in his case, gets you uh, free, what, what, what the judge says is, okay, we're going to let him free. Somebody still got to pay the penalty. And Jesus says, okay, I'll pay. Well, you know the penalty is death. That's where he ends up on the cross. Why? To get you from here to here. What's this whole cross thing? When we take communion, is it just crackers and, oh, here we go, communion again? Yo, you, you need to stop that. That whole communion is about remembering you were here. Now you're here. Because he wanted you here. That's the first part. Secondly, secondly, so, so, so by grace you have been saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Next, in one sense we are being saved. We are being saved from the power of sin. That's the present tense. We call that sanctification. Sanctification. Now, what's sanctification? Well, sanctification is different justification than this. You can't be sanctified until you've been justified. Sanctification is how God keeps you saved. What he does is he gives you power over the power. So in one sense, you have power over. Can I, can I help you just a little bit? And I know this ain't real preachy, but I just got to teach this. Can I do that? Sanctification says, okay. You got problems. You drank too much. You got a problem. What I'm telling you is, you still got a problem. The difference is I'm giving you power over your problem. No, the, po- the problem ain't gone yet because the problem's going to go away in the process. The difference is I'm going to give you power during the process. That's the reason Paul says in Romans 1, you are saved from faith to faith. So at one level, you get baptized and you just fired up, but you still want to drink. Oh, stop it, you do. That's all right. You, power, you still want to drink. You wanted one yesterday, you're going to want one today. The difference is, now you have power to not drink. You say, Brother Hague, I don't believe that. That's when you ain't got no power. You ain't got 
Because once you start to believe faith becomes your victory. That's First John. Faith is your victory. See, your power comes in your faith. That faith will come by hearing. So if God says, I'm free, I'm free. You say, well, I don't feel free. God didn't say you're going to feel free. God says you are free. Are y'all following this? You ain't got to feel like I'm, you know, no, you ain't going to feel free for, for about two years. But one day you're going to look up and you say, hallelujah. I don't even want to sleep. I, I could probably go to the liquor store and sleep there and not get a nip. But you can't today. Today, you have to believe beyond belief that God has done something too wonderful for words. You got to believe that yesterday I was trapped in it and today I'm free. So, 1 Corinthians 1.18, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. I want you to notice also damnation can be, is also something that is durative and a process. In the same way, sanctification, I just want to drop that here. If some of you are wondering, well, well why, Christians grow from faith to faith. When you're lost, you go from worse to worse. All right, sorry. He said, but to those of us who are being saved, you see that? We're in a process of being saved. Yeah, we're saved, but we're also being saved. He says, it is the what? Somebody shout power. In one sense, we shall be saved from the presence of sin. That's future tense. We call that glorification. I want to look at this last passage, then I'm going to sit down. I know I can't get to James 1 today. I, I appreciate you. Y'all, y'all don't know, everybody's looking up here at me. And, praise the Lord. You going to help me down? God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Uh, uh, don't worry. I, I, I'll preach it next week. And the following week, um, um, Brother Matt and Brother, Brother Alvin are going to do a magnificent job. And they're going to start the series instead of me in the second. <laughs> but we're going to do James 1 next week. Anyway, so much more than I just love this passage. Um, this is a teaching passage so you can understand your salvation. If, if nothing else, I hope you leave here today understanding what it means to be saved. What it means to be saved. And, and why your, your life ought to be fully converted to who, who Christ is. All right, so here is something. Much more than having now been justified by his blood. <laughs> see, see the past tense? You see the past tense? Having now been justified by his blood. We shall be saved, future tense, from wrath through him. That's future glorification, saved from wrath. Verse number 10, for if when we were enemies, past tense, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. You see what the death of Jesus did? He says much more, oh, Jesus, having been reconciled, you see that? We shall be saved by his life. You were lost. Much more than having now been justified by his blood. Much more than when we were enemies. I'm now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. (laughs) Y'all are missing it. I'm going to read it again. Much more than... Having now been justified. You say, well, having now what? Reverse eight somebody. Romans 5, 8. Romans 5, 8. But God shows his love for us. That we were yet sinners. Christ died. Somebody say yet. Yes. See, when did Christ die? Christ didn't die waiting on you. Christ died while you were in your mess. Who was in their mess last night? Oh, y'all all scared. <laughs> Everybody's scared to tell <laughs> Yeah, some of y'all were doing wrong last night. <laughs> Ain't it good to know that Christ didn't wait on you? Because he'd still be waiting, wouldn't he? But see, his desire, notice, he never positions himself as the enemy. Even while you're being his enemy. Even while you're being his he doesn't, what does he do? He says, I'm going to die for you. When? While you're still cussing me out. While you still can't stand me, I'm going to die for you. When? While you still getting high every day, I'm, I'm going to die for you. When? While you still fornicating all the time, yeah, I'm going to die for you. Yeah. When? While you still got your lesbian lover, that's right, I'm going to die for you. You say Christ died for lesbians? He, he died, hey, you better be glad he died for lies too. Ain't you glad? <laughs> While you were still lying, 
He died for you. He says, now, if, if God commends his love to us and that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. He says, much more then. Y'all are missing it. Y'all are missing it. I wish I could just get off of it. He says, he says while you were yet sinners. That's verse 8. This is verse 9. Verse, well, he says, but God commends his love to us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. He says, okay, you're a sinner? Worthless, low down, sinner. What I'm going to do, I'm going to die for you. He says, much more than having been justified. He says, now that you are, now I have paid for you. He says, won't we be saved from wrath? If anybody have you ever seen a Bentley? Me and my wife saw a beautiful blue Bentley. Drop top. Cobalt blue. Brownish or orangish brown leather interior. It was cold. It was, yeah, 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 yeah. It was cold. It probably cost 200 grand. It was cold. I guarantee you it had insurance on it. Oh, y'all are missing the point. Okay, all right, all right. I guarantee you he didn't even drive it off the lot. I guarantee you. What did it got to do with my salvation? Much more than. I guarantee you Christ didn't pay his son. I mean, God didn't pay Christ. Let Christ die for you and not get some insurance on you. Y'all are missing it. Y'all are missing it. See, some of y'all think y'all jump in and out of salvation. <laughs> y'all are crazy. You really think God going to save you and just let you keep jumping in and out of salvation? You think he ain't going to protect his investment? He invested his son, Jesus Christ, in you much more than. Are you kidding me? You mean to tell me all of a sudden I got you because my son, I'm just going to let you go to hell? Are you crazy? See, some of us have been preached that for all our lives. And we, and we, we live this deficit Christianity. Every time we come, we, we come, we feeling bad. We, we, feel, we feel guilty every time we come to church. Oh, God. Or we scared. I'm going to hell. The devil is a lie. I ain't going to hell. Do you not know literally the Bible only gives you one way to go to hell as a Christian? Now, as a non-Christian, you're going anyway, no matter what you do. But as a Christian, there ain't but one way you're going to hell. You want to know what it is? You choose to. You choose to walk away. That's it. You say, Brother Hagel, but you know, no. I, yesterday, I was at work. You don't understand. And this started talking to me. And I said, I'll kick you. You don't understand, Brother Hagar. I, I was plotting. I was plotting. I knew what Tupperware they used in the, in the, in the refrigerator. Y'all don't understand. I, I, I had already got some rat poison. You don't even know, Brother Hagar. <laughs> I'm going to hell, Brother Hagar. I ain't a good person. Newsflash. Ain't now one of y'all good. At your best, you're bad. What much more than God ain't trying to let you go to hell. So, Brother Hagin, well, you mean I can't go to hell? I didn't say that. You can go if you want to go. Well, I'm, how, why would I want to go? Well, faith come by. Y'all, y'all, are y'all missing this? Are y'all missing? Faith come by hearing. That's the reason the devil is always in your ear. Because if you can lose your faith, all of a sudden you don't believe God can do what he can do, and you walk away. You believe because of your circumstances or something bad happened or, or something horrible happened. All of a sudden, because it was so bad, it hurt so bad, it hurt so bad. So now you walk away from God. That's all the devil needs you to do, for you to walk away. That's it. And I know there's these popular preachers, the devil trying to take your money. The devil don't care about your money. The devil wants your wife. Believe me, the devil got folk find it in your wife. I'm just letting you know. He got plenty find it in your wife. He don't want your wife. What he wants is for you to walk away from God. And if he can do that by taking your wife, 
then he'll do it. But let me tell you something. <laughs> you know, this is going to be tough. I'm going to sit next to my preacher. I'm going to say this right here. <laughs> if keeping your wife will make you walk away, he's going to make sure you stay with her. <laughs> See, y'all don't understand. This, this ain't no game. We think the devil cares about our rules. The devil got one thing to do. One. Have you walk away from God. He's got one job. He doesn't care how he does it. And that's the reason God says, I'm playing for keeps too. Oh, you, go, you all in, I'm all in too. I'm giving my son Jesus for you. Top that. Do something better than that. Are y'all following this salvation thing? And that's what he's talking about. When he says, you shall be saved, you shall be glorified, you shall be in the presence of Jesus, you shall walk on streets of gold. That's what he's talking about. He said, don't worry about it. Stay in the church. Stay with God. Hallelujah. Keep your faith. Believe God. Do what God says do. Walk right. Talk right. Sing right. Pray right. Do whatever God says do. He says, I shall do my part. Oh, y'all been so good. Y'all stand to your feet. I'm, I'm sorry. Y'all, y'all stand to your feet. That's salvation. Three senses, three tenses. You say, what does salvation have to do? What does salvation have to do with me studying the Bible? Well, those of you who were aware, who were two, two weeks ago, you'll remember. He'll say, this is the word which saves you. And the salvation he was talking about there was sanctification. The idea of keeping you saved. Maybe somebody's here today. Somebody's here today. You're saying to yourself, you know what? You know what, preacher? Uh, I need some help. I need help. Let me help you out. Everything you need is in Jesus. Let me help you out. Whatever you need is in Jesus. Joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, strength. Whatever you need is in Jesus. Justification, sanctification, glorification is in Jesus. Relationship with, with Jehovah, relationship with the Holy Spirit. It's in Jesus. If, 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 if you lost your mama, the Lord says, I'll give you more mamas. If you lost your daddy, he said, I'll give you more daddies. If, if you lost your brothers and sisters, he says, I'll give you more. Whatever you need, I got it. Food, shelter, I got it. Whatever you need, direction, purpose. It's in Jesus. Whatever you need, whatever you need, holiness. Hallelujah. You ain't got to wait for me. If you need to come on down, come on down. Holiness, power, strength. It's in Jesus. Oh, y'all ain't got to wait. You're right. You just come on down here. Whatever you need, it's in Jesus. Whatever you need. Whatever you need, it's in Jesus. Whatever you need. I suppose anybody here needs something today. You say, Brother Hagin, I need money. It's in Jesus. You say, yeah, you just name it, claim it, believe it. I ain't talking about name it, claim it, believe it, receive it. What I'm telling you, if David said, I was young, I'm old now. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I believe them kind of promises. You say, Brother Hagin, I'm homeless right now. Well, glory to God, there's a home in Jesus. You say, Brother Hagin, what do you mean? The Lord going to buy me a house? He'll get you some shelter. You had a house. <laughs> Y'all missed that. <laughs> you missed that. Whatever you need, whatever you need. Whatever you need. It's in Jesus. You need your marriage fixed? It's in Jesus. You say, you say Brother Hagin, I know some folks. I know some Christian folks got jacked up marriage. So do I. So do I. What will happen is, though, what God will do is take your jacked up marriage and use it for a testimony. 
That's what he'll do. I'm telling you, that's what he does. Because he never does anything. Nothing ever works out that's not working out for your good. You say, Brother, just, that's horrible. That's not horrible. That's power. God never promised you everything was going to be like you wanted. He promised you it was going to be victory in it. Say amen when you can. Don't you want to be a winner this morning? We have several folks who's already come. Maybe you need some encouragement. Whenever you're ready. Maybe you need some encouragement. They're going to start singing. Great come on down. Your mercy. mercy towards me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your loving kindness, kindness towards me. Your tender mercy. Your tender mercy. I see. Day after day. Day after day. Forever faithful towards me, always providing for me. Great is your mercy towards me, great is your grace. Tinder. 